Background in athletics and uh, full-time athletics, but in those days it wasn't professional, so full-time job on top of that. I suppose the pinnacle of the athletics career was 1978 Commonwealth Games, where I finished sixth in the triple jump. On that tour, I um, broke the New Zealand national record with a jump of 16.22, which was fantastic. fantastic. Well, I started in um, little athletics also, track and field, and highlight during my time in Australia was being runner-up Australian junior champion, and then went to live in New Zealand, and was hoping to be a husband-wife team at the Commonwealth Games, but unfortunately, glandular fever struck me down um, during that selection period. Oh, Easton was awesome. Hit the <laughs> and one. modest. Hit the floor running. He played every sport. Basketball, football, squash. cricket, squash, badminton. Played the lot. He was awesome. And he was a bit of a kamikaze pilot with them all too. I can remember one visit to uh, to Easton where he said, Dad, look at I've learned riding full pelt down a hill off a pile of bark and just disappeared <laughs> over the edge and I thought, I've killed him in his mum's yard. And he just loved it. Jeez, that's a great take from Easterwood. It's an amazing feeling to see your son or one of your siblings run out onto a sports field and participate. And develop at such an elite level too. Yeah, it's just a real highlight. We didn't know if we were going to have a cricketer or a footballer but he also excelled academically, so well-grounded, really well-grounded, and that's what we're proud of. Beautifully cut off there by Easterwood. Easton is named after his great-great-grandfather, and his great-great-grandfather was a renowned horsebreaker in the Western District, and his name was Easton Driscoll. And Easton Driscoll um, had a short story written by Alan Marshall. It was titled Hammers Over the Anvil. Hammers Over the Anvil then became a movie and Russell Crowe played Easton. There you go. Woohoo! We'd like to meet <laughs> Russell never one seen day. That. Is that even true? <laughs> that is very true, but the family hired it oh, because they it. made it quite raunchy. They made poor old Easton Driscoll to be a bit of a womaniser, and he wasn't. <laughs> and, and talking about that, here's another true story. We had in a two year period, the two brothers between them, we had 14 broken windows. The problem at home was mum was too into her garden, so my cricket pitches kept getting taken away. The basketball I'd court I'd got taken the away. Pitch, the and turn into a new garden bed, so I'd move the, move the new cricket pitch and be close to the house. When they blame your pet lamb for pushing pet the golf lamb. buggy through the window, uh, I thought, that's it, that's it. No. That had a great um, CD collection, just one album that had this little light on it, oh, and the album um, Pulse. was Pulse by Pink Floyd, and it just kept flashing because it kept pulsing. It lasted for years. <laughs> it did, didn't it? The first song off that album, Shine On Your Crazy Diamond, became my favourite my oh, favourite song. Number. You did oh, get to the stage good. where you were going to have singing lessons. He's got the most gorgeous husky voice. Nah. But nah. 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 <laughs> no good. A rendition? Nah. Yeah. No. Yeah. Oh. Nah. No. <laughs> <laughs>